Another approach that you might take is doing stuff where you roll stuff together. I'm going to take a really nice thin piece of my white clay, very thin. And a very thin slice of my red. That's what I'm going to play with. So I want to make sure there's not air between those two. And I'm just going to take those two and I'm going to roll them out. Just pressing them into each other. And again, I'm doing this on paper just so that it does not pick up the texture that it would pick up if I were doing it onto canvas. If I did it straight onto the table, I'd have issues most likely with trying to pick it up. All right. So now I've got this slab that's pretty blended. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut out an area where everything is overlapping cleanly. I can save this stuff to play with. All right. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna take my little two color slab and I'm gonna roll it up. I'm trying really hard to make sure I don't have just like air inside there to start. All right. I don't think I did that tightly enough. So let's try again. Because you really want to make sure that there's not air. So I needed to do that slower and compress a little bit more as I went. All right, that looks better. So once you've got the thing that looks like a cinnamon swirl, you might be ready to play with it. So what can I do with this cinnamon swirl thing that I've just made? I'm kind of thinking of it, if you've ever made beads out of Sculpey, it's gonna be that same sort of approach. So I've just cut off the end because that's not flat, but the interior is a swirl. So I can create something that has a swirling pattern going on. So again, evenness is key. I'm going to cut off a bunch of little flat pieces here. Very much like making cinnamon buns. All right. So I've got a whole bunch of these and I think I'm gonna to try to arrange them now by swooshing them together, but I'm gonna put a piece of slab behind them that they're swooshing into. Since the outer ring on all of these is the red clay, I think I'll choose white clay as what's going behind them so that there's a contrast on the edge. 
So I'm going to start off by just rolling this out a little bit. More attractive side is most likely facing down. Picked up a little bit of the red, but I'm okay with how that looks. All right, so now I'm gonna just take my little spot things and I'm just gonna put some of them on here. I like this asymmetrical look. I could create an all over pattern. Okay, but I'm just gonna try squishing those right in. So you wanna be kind of cognizant of like which way you're rolling the rolling pin because that controls which way things squish out. Ooh. Okay, well I might end up cutting it there. Now I've got these cool swirly guys built into my slab. It's really important that when you're doing this, that everything be really wet. Because if this were getting it all firm, it would just not do that ability to press in for me. I'm gonna put a piece of paper on top just to do a roll to try to make it like really nice and smooth. Because I know that my hand movements with this rolling pin are not perfect. They're very, you know, human made. Kind of checking my thickness. All right. So now I've got that and I can consider playing with that piece as well and think about what I might want to build with it. Here, I've just taken all my scraps and wedged them together, and it's getting this really cool marble texture. So that's another approach that I could take. It's just wedging it together, and it might make a very just lovely marble look. what you might make with any of these. 